Hi, this is Jason Deese. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Flash. Uh, the other night we held a live town hall meeting, uh, which was well received, uh, but I know a lot of you couldn't have uh, attend that in a live fashion, so we wanted to record a version for you here. Just kind of go over the journey of the last year. It's hard to believe it's only been a year, uh, but take you through uh, what we've been doing, where we're going as a company, talk a little bit about your investments as well. I'll give you a little bit of history uh, about myself. Uh, some of you may not know. Uh, I was a career government employee, worked for the National Weather Service for 21 years, bouncing around offices from Jacksonville, Tampa, Birmingham, and then the last 10 years in Atlanta. So had a really nice, uh, stable job, but left it uh, for this uh, exciting venture. Uh, just really, really had a passion for what this could do, what this could uh, do as far as saving lives, um, and then also, of course, making some money too. Uh, our, our motto here, mantra, the thing that we live by, saving lives and economies with weather analytics. And for us, the order there is important. Um, we truly feel that if we save lives and do the right thing and uh, you know are, are good to our community, good to the world, uh, the money will come. And so we're just doing the right things and we're focusing on saving lives first. And so um, we're, we're going to do some big things, show you some demos here today uh, that hopefully will get you excited and then also have some really good breaking news for everybody coming up too. So uh, stay with us here. So we're going to talk about a little bit the review of last year, uh, the fundraising history uh, that allowed for new hires, uh, product development, beta tests. Uh, we have a grant status. We've applied for several grants, uh, customer acquisition, uh, our partner status. And then we're going to take you into the product suite. I'm sure everybody wants to see some of the demos, 15 to 25 minute lightning prediction among some others as well. And then we're going to take you through the flash plan. So what are we going to do uh, over this next year? This, this first year has been such a whirlwind. You know, I want to take time out to just thank you guys. Uh, thank our investors who were there for us from the very beginning. Uh, you know, when we had more of just a concept and an idea, uh, you were there for us. So we really thank you for your support and uh, hope you continue to support us as, as well. But we'll talk about our plan going forward and uh, what that entails. So fundraising wise, again, thank you so much. That first start engine raise, uh, we raised it in just six short weeks. We were given six months. I don't know if everybody knows that we were given six months to raise a million dollars. We did it in six weeks. It was one of the fastest ever to reach the goal. Uh, that was at 10 cents a share. Uh, we did do a small regulation D raise in the summer of 2021 following that up, mainly word of mouth, um, people we knew, uh, we raised it without much effort, to be honest with you. And we were at 30 cents a share just due to the fact that we had some product development that we'd actually, uh, uh, succeeded in. So that's why the price per share went up at that time. So these uh, two raises enabled us to make some pretty big hires. I mean, of course we have myself, as I mentioned, I've, I started out at NetJets, but then quickly transitioned after a year to the weather service. Uh, but uh, the first hire uh, were, uh, first two hires were uh, Will Howard and Jamie Castle. Uh, Jamie's interesting because uh, you know, he's got Air Force experience uh, and served there, but also was part of NetJets uh, for a long time, for over 26 years uh, in the mitigation department, which is perfect for us because that's uh, kind of the area we want to be. But the interesting part is, is that he hired me for my first job at NetJets and so kind of come full circle and I've uh, taken him on here as part of uh, Flash and we're doing great things. Uh, Will Howard hired him as our lead software engineer. Um, the great thing about my two software guys, Will and Dylan, are that uh, they also have degrees in atmospheric science and so in addition to being whizzes uh, in the computer science realm and programming and all that, uh, they're also able to understand the language of atmospheric science as Jamie is. He's got a degree in meteorology as well. And so us all speaking the same language enables us to uh, come up with products in a much more rapid manner. Uh, but Will has, uh, he, he took this on full force and has been really great for us. And then Dylan, our latest hire, uh, he's the one I feel a little bit bad about because he was going after his doctorate at Penn State. And I took him out of school before he could finish that. But he was really excited and uh, to join us and, and saw the potential of what we were doing and some of the things that he's doing uh, in the realm of artificial intelligence and machine learning are just amazing. So uh, these are uh, a small team, but uh, really dedicated and uh, really good at what they do. So at the end of the day, uh, what Flash is about is taking algorithmic insights 
infusing artificial intelligence and machine learning and then these vast data lakes and so it's really about the data i mean we're we're a data company we take huge amounts of data on the order of a streaming game platform we're taking every radar in the entire united states every satellite data uh taken every five minutes so you imagine all of the satellite suite radar data uh taken every five minutes and ingesting that not to mention high resolution uh, computer model data for weather modeling and then hundreds of other streaming input variables requiring uh, costs in excess of 10000 a month right now. So it's expensive to do all this data. So that's why there's not a lot of companies doing it. But uh, it sets the infrastructure for us. It allows us to move data from one late location to another quickly and produce forecasts in a very rapid manner, in a manner in which no other company can do right now. And so that's really what sets us apart is taking in all these huge amounts of data, infusing AI and machine learning, and then producing a forecast in a very quick manner, which is what's needed uh, in order to give people lead time and alerts as to what's coming. We also have the algorithm. Uh, the first algorithm used with the company, the patent was issued back in September, 2019. My patent attorney, it was issued in six months. He said that's one of the fastest patents he's ever seen issued because there was nothing else like this on the market at the time. And there's still nothing like this on the market. So we're really excited about that. It takes real-time observation data. And what it does is it bridges the gap in the research by creating a range of possibilities. And so it can say that lightning is 70% possible here, 80% possible here, all the way up to 100%. Um, so uh, it just bridges the gap and creates a nice range for us. Initial forecast is based on all that data. So all that data we're taking in, we're using this algorithm to produce a forecast. When we first started this, it took well over a minute to produce a forecast for one 10 mile location. So think about that one 10 mile location uh, took quite over a minute to produce. Now that we've got all this data, now that we've streamlined everything, now that we've got this architecture in place, it takes less than 400 milliseconds to produce a, a conus wide forecast. So for the entire United States, less than one second to produce a forecast. So excited about that. Then we have our AI engine. Uh, we're taking hundreds of terabytes uh, per hour, 10 to 30 years of data. So it used to be we used physics and math uh, to predict. Uh, we still do that to some degree, but now we use the past to predict the future. And it's, it's shown that it's a lot more accurate to do that way. And so using this ai engine and artificial intelligence we can train multiple models for two to eight weeks use the past data feed that into it and then the initial forecast that we have we're feeding back into our ai engine and then this algorithm is continually modified based on the new inputs to produce more accurate forecasts so you know whereas some companies are just producing one forecast and that's it we're actually training our models we're training and looking for different ways uh, continually to improve it which is why our forecasts are more accurate so all this leads to an entire product suite, limitless number of products. Pretty much, if you can think of something, whether it be winter storms, hurricanes, fog, frost, uh, any weather parameter you can think of, uh, we can produce uh, an AI forecast of. Uh, we started with the 15 to 25 minute individual lightning strike prediction plots. Now we're moving into AI derived lightning probability. So forecast out to two hours for lightning at five minute increments. So you can imagine, you know, five, 10, 15, all the way out to two hours how important that can be. Think of uh, uh, construction crews, uh, think of uh, hospitals, uh, think of anything outdoors that needs a lot of lead time for lightning. Tornado, wind, precipitation onset, winter storm, on and on and on. We can produce whatever we want now that we have the infrastructure structure and database uh, in place uh, to produce these AI forecasts. Uh, don't want you to follow this too much. Uh, it kind of goes back from May uh, all the way up to the present time, but this is just all the things that my software team has been working on. And I'm really proud of the work that they've done and, and, and the work that they put into this. And they've done some amazing things for just really two guys and some contract work. Uh, it's been amazing what they've been able to do. And like I said, taking those forecasts from where we took us over a minute to produce one down to less than a second, working with all this data. Uh, just really proud of what they've done. And you can see here at all the many things that they've done and gotten done through the last uh, four to five months. So what have we done with all this? Well, we've gotten some traction, which is good. Uh, the Miami condo collapse, we were asked to provide lightning forecast to rescue crews for a five day period after the collapse. This included forecast for the approach of tropical storm Elsa. And that was a challenging forecast, but uh, we also got a shout out on CNN for this. Uh, we were excited about that. They didn't mention our name, unfortunately, but they said there was a company providing lightning forecast to the rescue crews to protect them from lightning. So uh, that was good. 
Um, then we also uh, had an opportunity to go up to Daytona uh, for the race up there and provide a lightning forecast for the public for the safety of race attendees. And then DGM race team, we uh, got our name on the back of the car. Maybe you guys saw that. We provided accurate forecasts for the onset of precipitation to aid their race strategy. Uh, one thing cool about that event, uh, Jamie and I were there. Uh, we saw the first lightning on our product it was showing well offshore. It said it was going to produce some lightning, and it was during the evening, so we knew you could see lightning up to 30 miles away. And so we knew it was safe. Jamie said, let's take them outside. And I was like, are you sure, Jamie? He said, yeah, let's go look at it. And so we got all the race teams. We got all the owners, the crews. We got them out there, and we were taking a look out uh, to the southeast. And we waited about 15 minutes, and sure enough, the, the sky lit up with that first lightning strike that we'd predicted. And so they were calling it witch magic and voodoo, but we were calling it good forecasting. And so it was a really cool moment. Uh, other ones that we've been talking to, Spirit Airlines, NetJets, um, Golf, Troon Golf, which is one of the largest in the world, Golf Now, uh, some weather providers, PGA Tour, Georgia Power, uh, you name it, we've been talking to them, and there's just a host of others here that have come on in the last couple of weeks that aren't even listed here. Grant status. So our product lends itself very nicely uh, for the, the grant process and helping out uh, you know, the military and so, uh, well, the military and the government alike. And so we have many uh, grants that are out there right now looking for additional funds, which is good because it doesn't dilute our equity or your equity for that matter. And so we have one out for the USDA application for wildfire mitigation, utilizing flash lightning prediction. Uh, the wildfire community is just really excited about the lightning prediction part. You know, maybe we can't mitigate a fire completely, but we can get crews out there to a fire maybe when it's 100 acres as opposed to 1,000 acres, and that makes all the difference. So we have a USDA one out. We have three NOAA applications out. Uh, usually it's hard to get one accepted. We submitted three, and all three were accepted. Uh, by NOAA. So those were applications for lightning prediction, tornado prediction, and aviation. So we're waiting to hear back from that. And then most recently, one of the bigger ones is AFWERX, which is the aviation arm of grants uh, and the Air Force. Uh, that was an application to expand Flash AI globally, which we're really excited about. We sought three memorandums of understanding, which are basically contracts with the military. If you can get a contract with the military, you stand a much better chance of getting a grant. So uh, they said, cast a wide net. We did. We had to turn two away. All three were interested in assigning an MOU. We accepted just the letters of support of two of them, but we did accept the memorandum or contract from the 52nd Fighter Wing in Germany just because we wanted to expand this globally. We thought this would be a good way to do it. $1.2 million in possible funding with that. We got the letters of support from the 45th Weather Squadron, which is responsible for all of the launches there at Cape Canaveral, and then uh, 557th Weather Wing out of Nebraska, which includes the Chief of Weather Operations for the entire Air Force. So I think we're staying a pretty good shot uh, at some of these uh, grants. Customer acquisition, uh, this is huge for us. Uh, one of which being uh, WeatherTap. Uh, they're uh, uh, kind of a weather clearing house. They organize all the weather data that's in there and then they uh, kind of send it out. They don't really produce anything proprietary. They just take really cool things that others have done. And so this is a really good way for us to test the market and see how we're doing. So it's a beta test with them. We're gonna be an add-on service for their service and also bring them new customers in. But uh, really exciting to uh, take advantage of their subscription database that's already uh, intact and uh, see where we go from there. And then more recently, my captain, uh, really excited about this one. This is a, an exciting startup out of Florida. And what they're doing, you can think of them as the Airbnb or uh, Expedia of uh, charter boat fishing. And so uh, they're going to have an online presence where uh, they're taking all the charter boat fishermen and charter boats that are available all across the nation, organizing that into one simple app where you can go and uh, schedule a charter boat uh, very easily and your captain that you want and the experience that you want. So much needed and really cool. And then they've decided that they're going to use Flash and use our weather services uh, on board all of their charter fishing boats and their app uh, to help people decide, you know, which one they want to do, which experience they want to do, whether weather will affect it. Also going to try to get in all the marinas around the country. Uh, this venture is uh, one by uh, Nick Patty, uh, Michael Milano, and then someone you might have heard of, Matthew Milano, who's also an investor in Flash, but Matthew Milano is a star linebacker for the Buffalo Bills. And so um, look him up, but we're really excited about this partnership that we have with them and the things that it's going to bring. 
And then we also have struckbylightning.org. Um, this is uh, Lightning, at, the, at least at the time of this recording, Lightning Safety Awareness Week. Um, and so struckbylightning.org is one of the biggest advocates in the country for lightning safety. They're the ones that came up with uh, When Thunder Roars, Go Indoors. And for years they've talked about, you know, just waiting for that first rumble of thunder before you take action because there was no lightning prediction. Um, I proved this technology to them. Michael Utley, who is in charge of this, you know, he was a little skeptical at first, but then once we showed him the demos, he said, well, this is going to change the world. And so he was really excited to partner with us and change the paradigm. And so no longer waiting for that first rumble of thunder, we're actually going to be predicting lightning. And so partnering with them is going to be huge for us and the connections that they already have uh, across the country. So very excited about the partnership with them. So demo time. I know everybody's excited to see what we're actually been producing. Um, show you some of these products that we have here. Some of them I'm going to wait and uh, roll them out uh, as the next campaign starts. But uh, for now, I'm going to show you some of these demos. So here's October 28th. All of these cases are from uh, demos that we did for uh, prospective customers and beta testers. And so this one was done for Spirit Airlines. They asked for one for Orlando. So the star there is at Orlando International Airport. And then this is just uh, kind of showing this activity as it moves toward Orlando. So if I hit play on this, what I need to show you is the green and reds here are indicating the kind of the rain or the potential thunderstorms that were moving in that day. Where you see uh, the red dots, uh, that means that lightning, that's one of our models, our AI infused algorithm models saying lightning is possible. Purple means lightning is imminent. So those are the two flash ones, the red, lightning possible, purple, lightning imminent, and the blue is the actual lightning that occurred that day. So that's why we do archive cases to see how well we did. And just watch how well this all lines up. That's what you want. You want all this lining up, the lightning that we predicted, and then the lightning that actually occurred. And so if I put this in motion, you can see through the forecast through the day how well our lightning prediction, all software, no hardware, um, is doing producing a forecast under one second. And doing a great job showing the uh, lightning for that day. Where are we a little bit different? We're a little bit different for storms down here in southwest uh, Florida. So if you look at this one that's got the red dot here, eventually it's showing lightning possible with ours, then it shows purple, lightning imminent, and then right after that, there's the lightning that actually occurs. So we had actual 25 minute lead time from the time that we said lightning was possible to lightning actually occurred. This storm was headed for Orlando International Airport. Spirit Airlines was jumping all over the place. They're excited about this uh, and what the, this brings for them uh, up to an hour lead time. And then when we get the AI portion in there, two hour lead time on lightning, huge for their operations. So just really excited about this product here. Uh, I do want to show you, let's see if we can do a live version right now. So it's always dangerous to do stuff live, but uh, let's see if we can go in here and zoom in and we can look at the Gulf Coast here and there is some activity down there. So this is our actual live product. We will have it conus based, but right now just for performance issues, just want to show you if we click this lightning bolt over here, uh, once this loads, then it'll show all the lightning that's possible in the area. So let's see what we have uh, on our flash app as we uh, zoom in on this area, which should be exciting to see. Hit the little lightning bolt and see if there's any lightning out there. And sure enough, it all lights up. Look at that. Uh, under a second produced it. We have yellow there indicating lightning possible, the red indicating lightning imminent, and also showing forecast out ahead of the system of where the lightning is going to occur. So really exciting stuff in terms of that. So uh, let's go back to here and let's uh, do from the current slide here and finish this demo presentation up. Here's lightning prediction out to two hours. Okay, so the purple dots here indicate the actual lightning that day. In this case, we're doing two hours, so we're not gonna show the individual strikes, but we're gonna show probability. So anywhere you see green, yellow, red means lightning is probable. So the shaded region is our model, our AI infused machine learning, showing where the lightning is going to be in two hours. Let's see how well this lines up. And look at that. I mean, just pretty much spot on showing the lightning for that day and where it's going to be. And so that's out to two hours. I can't tell you uh, the appetite for this product is going to be enormous. It's almost not going to be fair as far as selling because we're not going to have to sell it. Just showing them this product uh, is going to sell itself. So we're really excited about this one. 
Here's another one we did for Intera, uh, which is a wildfire intelligence company out in Colorado. Uh, this was out in California. I think it was a fire that caused uh, $10 million damage here in the star. It was induced by lightning. And here's just showing you the forecast and our probabilities. The purple again is the actual lightning for that day. Go through time. You can see our probabilities, how well it lines up with the actual lightning for that day. So we would have given them heads up two hours out or more uh, that lightning would have been impacted a vulnerable region, a dry region where lightning, where a, a wildfire might occur. So this would have been quite helpful for them on that day and uh, why they're so excited about the future. Here's one for three hour tornado forecasting. Yes, you heard me right, three hour tornado forecasting. Uh, let's get this one from the current slide so we can look at that. There we go. So the shaded region here, the yellows and uh, reds here indicate our model showing the highest probabilities of tornadoes that day for the next three hours. Red line here is for reference. These are the same locations on the left and the right. And so we're indicating here in the yellows and reds high probability in the next three hours of tornadoes. What actually happened? Well, lo and behold, look at the tornadoes that actually happened in the red dots. These indicate actual tornadoes for that day in red dots lined up perfectly for, with what we were showing as far as a high probability. So imagine hospitals, again, construction, anything outside that requires advance notice uh, to get those uh, people out of harm's way. Uh, we're going to have uh, the AI machine learning uh, to help them with this. So products that people haven't ever seen before, uh, we're excited to produce this for them. Competitive overview, we have ThorGuard, Earth Networks, Visala. Uh, they're all the detection networks. They all require uh, actual either sensors or in uh, ThorGuard's case, they require hardware to be installed, 175,000 a piece, limited to a 30 mile radius. Earth Networks and Visala, they are CONUS, but all of these have no first strike capabilities. They're detection only, meaning they miss that first strike. Remember, 40% of all injuries and deaths occur with that first strike. So. Uh, the fact that none of these do that and we do is an important uh, distinguishing point. And then we have companies at the bottom that I call coopetition. Uh, the weather company, IBM, they have their weather uh, entities, Tomorrow.io, Planet IQ. These are really good companies, but what they don't have is the AI infused lightning prediction and other products that we produce. So they're going to be uh, more than happy to partner with us and uh, utilize our products. And so we're going to be looking at that. So these are not competition at all. These are companies that we're going to work with. And the advantage for us is we have a product products that no one else has. And so uh, that's what sets us apart. So let's talk about the evolution of our company, rapid development in year one, uh, February, 2021. Uh, we just basically had a tested algorithm and an idea, uh, which we took to start engine at 10 cents or a, a share and raised a million dollars. So, uh, turn it around to that reg D in summer, 2021, things had changed. We actually producing a product, an AI infused 15 to 25 minute lightning product coverage across the entire United States, uh, multiple beta tests, infrastructure in place for additional AI lightning products. And that enabled us to do the reg D raise at 565,000 at 30 cents a share. So what's different? What's coming? Well, now winter 2022, we went from this lightning product only to AI platform in place to produce an entire suite of weather intelligence products, lightning out to two hours at 30 minute increments, automated tornado warnings. We signed the agreement with the United States Air Force to expand it globally, onboarded our first new course customers. So if we're going to do a new start engine raise, which I can say here we are, uh, then that share price is going to go up. So really excited uh, coming up here Monday. Uh, we're going to be going back on start engine. We can announce that. We're going to be taking with it our AI machine learning framework. So lightning, tornadoes, wind, precipitation, hail, hurricanes, winter storms, you name it. Our AI is going to be able to produce products for these uh, much needed uh, weather parameters and give people more lead time than they've ever had on these dangerous activities. So the fundraise future, I have to read this exactly. Uh, no money or other consideration is being solicited if sent in response will not be accepted. No offer to buy these securities can be accepted and no part of the purchase price can be received until the offering statement is filed and only through an intermediary's platform. Indication of interest involves no obligation or commitment of any kind. Reserving securities is simply an indication of interest. All that to announce that yes, we are going back on Start Engine Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Tell your friends, uh, tell yourselves, if you want to get uh, a little bit more of the piece of the puzzle, uh, do that. Uh, come to Flash uh, starting 
on Monday at 11 a.m. Our six month plan. So we are customer acquisition, uh, pretty much enterprise, aviation, utility, public safety, insurance. I mean, it's all gonna be about bringing in customers now and we have the products to do it. Add on services with weather, aviation. We have a, two aviation companies really interested in what we do. Wildfire, I talked about in Terra. Sports, golf, golf now, add on to this is gonna be huge. In addition to the customer acquisition, though, we're going to be talking about partnerships. NASA, Google, SpaceX, Microsoft, Amazon, Boeing, Lockheed, uh, Northrop. All of these are in play. Okay, so we're going to be talking to all of these and uh, trying to get partnerships in addition to the customers. And then lastly, I want to talk a little bit about your investment. You know, uh, this is uh, a little bit confusing. Sometimes uh, this is not the stock market where you can go and, you know, you have liquidity with your money and you can put it in Apple or Google or something like that. You know, these are high risk investments. And so it's not lost on us that, you know, during this time that you guys put your faith in us, uh, we, we are being good stewards of your money and we're utilizing that and producing excellent products going forward. Uh, but we wanted you to realize that, you know, it's still a startup and it's still a high risk and there's not really any liquidity in your money yet. Uh, but we hope to uh, produce products that make this a big company that eventually will lead to something uh, more down the line uh, as far as the the stock market goes and all that. So uh, looking forward to that. But more than that, just thank you for your time today. Thank you for your continued uh, involvement with Flash. Um, tell everyone you can about us. Uh, we're going to be doing some big things and some of the demos you're going to see. First year has been crazy. Uh, second year, I can't even imagine it's going to be even crazier. So glad you guys are uh, along for the ride and you guys take care. Have a good one.